hid with Christ in God. Three in one. Your life is hid in Christ in God. Now, this is how God sees every believer. Unfortunately, because of religion, believers have failed to see themselves the way God sees them. Your life is hid in Christ and Christ is in God. There is no duality under this circumstance. There is no God here, Jesus here, and I'm here. No, the Bible says I am in Christ and Christ is in God. It means that to touch me is to touch Christ and to touch Christ is to touch God. Now let's look at the next verse. We need to avoid duality. We live a life of duality today. No wonder we are not getting the best of God. When Christ, everybody say, when Christ, who is our life? Is it different from us? What is Christ to you? It's your life. This life you live now is Christ living. He said, when Christ, who is our life? Unfortunately, we think we have a different life. Christ has a different life. We are making every effort to have his life. When in the actual sense, the Bible says, our life is his life. Oh, Pastor Shan, I don't know if I'm communicating. Our life is his life. He said, but Pastor, I made a mistake. The reason is, you have not been able to raise your consciousness of the fact that your life is his life. That you are not separate from him. By the time you live in this consciousness, some of the things that you look to that make you to have a drawback, those things will fall away. Because you see, God does not assess you by the things around you. He assesses you based on the sacrifice of Jesus on your behalf. Can I read on again? He said, when Christ who is our life shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him where? In glory. Because we have never been different. We have never been different. So when he comes at the second coming, and then we just appear with him. People say, wow, we didn't know you look so much like Jesus. You, are, you have been with us since, but we didn't know. Because Christ is our life. You didn't hear what I just said. I said, Christ is our life. Tap your neighbor says, stop living a dual life. Avoid duality. You have become one with him. Who is the first to say amen? So we are one with him. He lives as us. Christ lives as us. On Sunday, we were able to establish that also from Galatians and chapter 2, reading from verse 20. Maybe we'll quickly go through that. Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. Pastor, what is the whole essence of this teaching? The whole essence of this teaching is that you should stop seeing yourself as different from Christ. Christ has become your life. You don't have two lives, you have one life. Who am I talking to? I say you don't have two lives, you have one life. Christ has become that your life. Can I hear a better amen? He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Live at where? So we are one. If he's in me, how is he two? I don't have a separate life from him. Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Everybody say, in the flesh. Now, look at the choice of words. If Paul hadn't mentioned the fact that it's in the flesh, some theologians would have told us that what Paul meant here is that when Christ shall come, that is when we look like him. No. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. And the Bible says here, the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. By whose faith? Your faith? By the faith of the Son. I just live as him. That is what Paul is saying. I live as him. Take me back to our text today. Colossians and chapter number 3. Get back to our, our text again. Let me use, use amplified version of the Bible. Verse 3 and 4. The whole essence of teaching is to impact knowledge to people. Is that okay? So you, you didn't just come here to start breaking chains. You didn't come here to start st some assaulting. You came here to be taught. So give me your undivided attention. Amplified. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. Look at, you were 
were dead before. He said, and your new real life is hid with where is Christ? And we are not separate. Come on, tap your neighbor. Say, I'm not separate. If you see Christ, you have seen me. Because he lives in me. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 says, okay, I don't want to quote. Let's be read it. Please, the whole essence is I want you to see. Colossians 2.10. Please, I would have been quoting. Colossians 2.10. And ye are complete. Now, people look at you to say you are not complete. But the report of God is superior to the report of men. Am I speaking to somebody? And ye are complete where? Because you are one with him. You are not incomplete in him because you are him. The whole concept of what we are trying to pass across to you is an idea that your life is not separate. You are not two individuals. Christ is not there and you are here. And then you are doing everything to catch up with him. No. The whole idea is for the believer to know that Christ has become my life. So when I live my life in this flesh, I should just see Christ. Now because that is what the Bible says. Pastor, you are just trying to make us behave as though we are God. Yes, that is who you are. Jesus said you are God. In John chapter 10. Okay, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Can I switch there and come back? John 10 30. John 10. John 10 30. Praise God. Now this was the greatest offense Jesus ever had before the Pharisees. Now you are not the first to resist the message I'm sharing with you. The Pharisees couldn't cope with this message. Look at what happened. Look at the first statement Jesus made. I and my father are what? Huh? Next verse. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Doctor comes. You can imagine in your office, you just say, I and Jesus, we are one. Are you trying to say you are God? But that is what the Bible says. So Jesus came in the scene. He said, I and my father, we are one. The Jewish people, religious people, they got offended. Big stone. And let's see the reply. Jesus answered them, Many work, good works I have shown you from my father. For which of those works did you stone me? That is to say, I could do miracle here. People will be shouting, Pastor, he is a man of science and wonders. But experiencing a man of science and wonders does not make any impact in your life. Can I repeat that again? Experiencing a man of science and wonders doesn't make any impact in your life. What makes impact in your life is getting to know who you are in Christ. Am I communicating? The day you know who you are in Christ, you become, you become the signs and wonders. God does not want you to come and be a spectator of signs and wonders. God wants your life to be a revelation of signs and wonders. And that will only come in the knowledge of the fact that you and your Jesus, you are one. So it means that the operation of Jesus here on earth was predicated on this knowledge. So Jesus asked, the many good works I did, you never took up stones. So people can actually see signs and wonders and not bother the source. People can see signs and wonders and not bother about the source. Whether it's a familiar spirit, it doesn't concern them. They are excited. They are lost in that ecstasy. But Jesus got down to business. Jesus got down to business. And what is the real business? That you and Jesus, you are one. So tonight, I want us to get down to business. Your life is his life. Now, when you start living in this consciousness, no sickness will ever remain in your body. When you start living in this consciousness, the failure of others won't be your failure. Because you just realize that they look like you, but they are not you. They look like you, but you are Jesus. They are something, they are human beings. Am I speaking to somebody here? Now, let me finish this reading. Is uh, the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And be 
because that thou being a man make thyself God you see you are not the first to have this to have had this trouble I just shared with you now that Christ has become your life some people look at me what's pastor trying to say instead of pastor to just tell us that as you are living here there is a miracle waiting for you the best miracle is for you to know that that he lives in you that you are one with him avoid duality as you walk this world avoid duality we have so many Christians there are many Christians who don't even know what you are knowing to or what you have known so that they are Christians that don't mean they will enjoy what you enjoy you enjoy because you know am I speaking to somebody he said you shall know the truth and the truth you know makes you free so your freedom is tied to the truth you have known your miracle is tied to the truth you have known Oh, come on, sister. I say your miracle is tied to the truth you know. Amen. Glory be to God forever. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said. Come on, read with me. I said. So Jesus said, I was not blaspheming my father. I just told you the truth. Now, can you imagine you get to your office tomorrow, Engineer Silas, and you're just saying, and Jesus, we are one. He says, Silo, but we know you here. You know me here, but this is how he knows me. And this is how I've come to know myself. I don't have a different life from him. I don't have a separate life from him. We are not two individuals trying to be compatible. If we are trying to be compatible, how come he lives in me? He didn't struggle to live in me because we are one. Did you get that statement? He didn't struggle to live in me. So we can trace the success of the ministry of Jesus to this singular understanding that himself and the Father, they are one. It follows therefore that for every believer to attain to the height that God has marked for them in destiny, they must also come to this understanding that their life is the life of Christ. Am I speaking to somebody? Tap your neighbor and say, I'm not blaspheming. He lives in me. I live in him. My life is his life today. Who is the first to say amen? amen? Can I quickly say a few things that will shock you? This, we, this is where religion crept in. See, me, I'm living my life for God. I'm not living my life for Jesus. Mm -mm. When you still say you are living for, it means that thing is away and you are here trying to live for it. I'm here. My prayer now is that God will live through me. Jesus will live through me. No. You see, I've not gotten it. Because for you, someone to live through you, it means that one, that person is not blended in you. For someone, to, for you to live for someone, it means that you and that person are not one yet. But the right thing is that he lives as us. That was why when I was teaching during the Easter program, I was teaching you, he died as us, he was buried as us, he resurrected as us, and we are seated together in heavenly places. Can I hear an amen from someone? Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, my life is his life. I don't have a different life. Now, trying to be like Jesus is a man trying to be like a man. You didn't hear what I just said. Trying to be like Jesus is like a man inside this church. Everything he's doing, I say, I'm, I'm trying my best to enter inside the church. But meanwhile, he's inside the church. Trying to be like Jesus in the actual sense is an effort in futility because you are in him. If any man be... So why are you trying to be in him again? I'm just trying to... I don't, my life now. Because religion was sold to us first. You see people, everything they are doing, their language, you could tell where they are coming from. It's religion all the way. They are trying to. And that was the first problem of Eve. What was the problem of Eve? Look at it. He said, the day you eat of this tree, you will be like God. But she was a God. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. He said, you will be like. You know what the devil was trying to do? Was creating duality. Letting her feel that God is here, you are here. So when you eat, you'll be like him. But in the actual sense, she was God. Everything was at her beck and call. But because 
of lack of this understanding, the devil took advantage of her. And that's exactly what is happening in the, in the Christian faith today. A lot of us are doing everything to be like Jesus. But he is, our life is his life. Is it not what Colossians said? He said, our life is his life. Colossians 3 and verse 4. We didn't read verse 4. Did we read verse 4? Let's read verse 4 and amplify, which we didn't do. So Jesus answered them, Did the Lord not say you are God? Because I said, I and my father are one. Problem has started. So you must expect it. Even your mind does not accept it. Did you hear what I just said? Like I'm teaching now, even your mind finds it difficult to accept it. Or say, okay, uh, Mama and Jesus are one. Pastor Shine and Jesus, they are one. Okay, I come to you and say, I and Jesus, we are one. So what do you want Jesus to do for you? I'm here to do it. Yeah. You think if I'm looking for anybody, it's you, I will come and meet. But I'm the one you should come and meet. Praise the name of the Lord. He was the way, I have become the way. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. He was the way. We are blended together, I have become the way. That is why when you have this understanding, you can never be confused. You can never be confused. That they may still low. I say you can never be confused. When you understand this, struggle dies naturally. Jesus cannot die prematurely. You can't die prematurely. Now, because the church has failed in this respect, that is why we are busy looking for devils to chase out. The first thing you should do is to learn who you are. When you know who you are, the devil becomes very, very inconsequential. Can I hear an amen from somebody? We are busy looking for the devil and every attempt we make in looking for the devil is a show of identity crisis. What did I call it? A show of identity crisis. We simply don't know who we are. We are trying to find our identity in our ability to cast out devils. So we look for devils and, we and then we now say, God is with me. No, he went beyond God with me. He's in me. God is with me. He is in me now. When he was to come, he said, A virgin shall conceive. I will give birth to a child. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Which by interpretation? So he was with us before the death. After the death, he came in the person of the Holy Spirit. He lives. So God has left with us. God is now in us. Am I speaking to somebody? So believers must understand this. When you understand this, your life will not be lived in confusion. Believers are struggling today. Go around. Most of the people who are defeated, they attend one church or the other. Most of the people complaining about demonic activities, they go to one church or the other. Now the question is, when has the devil suddenly become so powerful that, 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 that he's the one leading? The truth remains, that the devil never led the people simply are walking in ignorance and the devil is taking advantage of them where did I quote? let's read verse 4 of Colossians and chapter 3 in the amplified version when Christ who is what is your life? so look at yourself, say Christ is my life come on, you see people are still having struggle in their mind look at yourself, say Christ is my life Look at your body. Are you saying sickness can't stay there? Christ, Christ is my life. Are, are you saying it? No. Can we look? Can you look at yourself? Say Christ is my life. Christ. Now, you need to keep saying this over and over until it gains the mastery over your mind. What I'm trying to say is that you must come to terms with the fact that your life is Christ. Tap your neighbor. Say neighbor, this life. Is Christ's life. So do you need do you need do you need increase? Touch this life. Touch this life. Can you can you impart that life? Glory be to God. When Christ, who is alive, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Christ is my life. Message rendering of verse 4. Christ is my life. I don't have a different life. Avoid this duality. And that is what we are teaching about. Avoid duality. Stop trying to put Christ there and you are chasing after him. 
He has become your life. When Christ, your real life. Come on. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you will show up to the real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. What's the real you? Christ. And that is why believers should stop talking this way. I'm just a human being. I'm just a human being. Please leave me. I'm just a... Every time you say you are just a human being, you have reduced your divinity. It deadens the consciousness of your divinity. Now, it makes you to be subject to what other human beings are subject to. It brings you under the vicissitude of life. It makes you a servant and a slave to the, the God and the power of the air. So how do I live above these things? said for did you hear that in view of what i just said for it is which in you both to will and to do where is he walking where is god walking where is We keep it there. Then we are walking for salvation. The Bible doesn't say walk for salvation. The Bible says walk out. That is what is already in you. Live that life out. Come on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Take note. The Bible doesn't say walk for your salvation. When people quote this, they quote this scripture with the mindset of people walking for their salvation. The Bible doesn't say walk for your salvation. He said walk out what is already there. For it is God. Who walked in you? He is already in you. So live in the reality of it. Stop this duality. Avoid duality. Stop putting him there and you are here. You are working for. You are working to get no in the actual sense of it. He is in you. Walk in the reality of who he is. For it is God who walked in you. But to will. The will to say, I need this, I want to get this done. And to do of what? His good pleasure. So your life is actually saturated in Him. Oh, come on. Why are people not shouting in church today? Maybe if I just told you, receive breakthrough, this is the greatest breakthrough. People are tired of breakthrough, have you noticed it? Pastors have promised people things until when the promises stop coming, the people stop coming to church. Do this in the next five days. If it doesn't happen, know that God didn't call me. And when it doesn't happen, do you, would you stop the call of God upon a man's life? No. But when you know this, this becomes your freedom. When you know this, you can want to, when you want to sleep, this is how you sleep. Father, thank you. Want to sleep? You are in me. Ah. But when you don't know this, Pastor, I had a nightmare. Witches, they came and pressed me, if not for God. So God came from outside to save you. 
Meanwhile, he is in you. Are you seeing what religion has taught us? Child, they were pressing me. Mm -mm. Something was pressing me. All of a sudden, God just came and helped me. In short, I saw one angel. Tap your neighbor and say, It is God that walketh in me. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, why is this teaching so important? When you understand this teaching, the desire to live this life becomes easy because you just realize he's working in me. Come on. I mean, he's still working in me. He's the one working in me. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, I can't do the pleasure of the devil because he's in me. I do his pleasure. So to live a life that people in the world call holiness and they, they are struggling to live that life because they think they are trying, they are, they, are, they are working for their salvation. They are working for holiness. They are working for righteousness. When in the actual sense, it is here. I'm very holy and I'm working in a consciousness of it. Avoiding duality is your sure way to victory in life. Thank you for saying amen because that is the high point of this discussion. Yeah. Avoiding duality is your sure way to a life of victory. Yeah. I'd like to quickly show you three more scriptures and we're planning to draw the curtain for today. Is somebody being blessed tonight? Now, but did you notice where we read in John 10 30 that there was no duality between Jesus and the Father? Was there duality? Come on, talk to me. Are you afraid to say no? I mean, there was no duality. Do you understand the word duality? Do we all understand the word duality? Because I defined it in part one. Now, what I mean to say, they never lived separately. They were one. Jesus said, I and my father were what? It's right there on the screen. I and my father so you two can say, I and Jesus we are one. Can we say it? I and Jesus are one. So maybe on Sunday before I preach, we will, we will be doing all that. You know why? Because we, we need to avoid this life of duality. Can we say it again? I and, Jesus are, I and Jesus are one. Now can you say that to your neighbor? Introduce yourself to your neighbor. Now talk to your other neighbor. Let your neighbor, let them know. You know, some people have already seen others to be wicked people. See, that man is a devil. Mm -mm. When you become a believer, you are in him, living this consciousness. I and Jesus are one. Can we say that again? I and Jesus are one. Next verse. Let's see what will happen when you say it outside. Next verse. Let's see what will happen when you say it outside. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. As soon as you say this, what do you expect from people? Huh? 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 Nah. Hello? IK. Do you realize that as soon as you start living in this consciousness, no prophet will collect money from you again? You can imagine you just go out now and just say that, somebody just say, I and Jesus, we are one. And maybe one prophet was already targeting you. The prophet just realizes that if I said my Jesus are one, then I have no market there, no business there. It's a bad market. So I want not to say it until it settles down in us. I and Jesus. Okay, would you say say this to your neighbor? Say, Jesus and the Father never had a dual life. Now, now look at me and I say, Pastor. I and Jesus, and Jesus, we don't have a dual life. We are one. We are one. Say to me, say, Pastor, Pastor, as I walk out of this door tonight, I'm walking in this consciousness that Jesus and I, we are one. So, am I speaking to somebody? Now, when we, if you dare live this way, no space for the devil. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. But our churches today are the ones giving place to the devil. You see, in the night, devil attacked me, they want to give testimony. 
If devil attacked me and the devil did this and the devil did this, one hour they are talking about the devil. And then they behave like our Nigerian home movies. When after dealing with a man for one hour, 30 minutes, in the next two minutes, victory will come and they say, to God be the glory. No, this life I'm here to enjoy. It's better I enjoy Jesus all through. Can I hear an amen from somebody? So say to your neighbor, I and Jesus are one. Luke 17, 21. Woo, glory to God. I am excited. Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God. What is the word is? Is is a verb. It's a doing word. Come on. It's a present word, as it were. The kingdom of God is. Stop looking around. People tell you, let's go to that mountain to pray. God is there. Tell them, this is God. I am my hand, Jesus. We are one. He said, neither shall they say, no, yea, or Lord, there. Let's go to this place. Let's go. Let's meet Daddy, Daddy O. Let, let's meet Mommy, do it now. Let me meet Mommy, see. <laughs> let's meet Daddy, do. When you just get there, the man will tell you all your problems. You know, you know why that happens? Because Christians have lived a life of duality. So when you see such Christians, you now see their problem. Come on, am I communicating? It's easy to know the level at which people are operating with or oper operating from. When they live this life of duality, they will always look for fig leaves to cover up. What did I say? They will always look for fig leaves to cover up. The fig God is there. Let's run. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is already within. So stop running around. Tap your neighbor and say, stop running around. Because you and Jesus are one. Unfortunately, do you know that as you are running around, Jesus is running with you? Because your life is his life. Jesus is looking for Jesus. And yet Jesus is Jesus. Am I communicating? Jesus is looking for Jesus and yet he is Jesus. Talk to me. No wonder that laughter. It's a good laughter. It's a very, it's, it's pathetic. The body of Christ. You carry Jesus. You are looking around for Jesus. Now, you could tell the success in the ministry of Jesus. And you could tell the failure of the Pharisees. The Pharisees believed in the law. We must fulfill this law if God must intervene in our life. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. And for me to fulfill this law, I need the Father in me. So I and my Father, we are what? So any miracle you see, it's me and my Father doing it. So let me tap your neighbor. Every miracle you see in my life, it's me and Jesus doing it. Is somebody getting blessed today? It's beginning to sink now. Come on, it's beginning to sink now. I and Jesus, we are one. Maybe what we will do, we will write it, this inscription, just paste it everywhere in the church. So we will just come, you look, I and Jesus are one. Huh? You struggle with your mind first, you look at it again, I and Jesus are one. Of course, we are going to put it there, John 10, 30. So you look at it. Let me avoid duality. Avoid duality. The kingdom is already within you. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask of him according to the power that is where. Now, do you know that all things, when we begin to live in the consciousness of this, we will not be praying like this again. Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. You know what we are just saying? Our Father that is not here is there. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm beginning to attack religion. Is it what Jesus taught his disciples to pray? Can I ask a question? Did any of the apostles repeat that prayer again? Our Father 
who art in heaven. Don't forget, Jesus had not died then. He was God with us. But after his death, burial, and resurrection, which of which was a substitutionary work for us, he was no more with us, is now in us. So if he's in us, it would be wrong to say, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, a kingdom come, that we be done on earth, give us this day. None of the apostles prayed those prayers. You know why? The word, our Father in heaven, conveys distance. Come on. Conveys what? Distance. And it negates the concept of you and Jesus are one. Come on. Am I speaking to somebody? It also is contrary to the revelation of scripture that says the Holy Spirit will abide with you now for how long? But the Holy Spirit was not abiding with the disciples so they could pray that prayer, our Father in heaven. But now the Holy Spirit abides with us forever. Am I confusing you? Are you being blessed tonight? Now look at your neighbor with a smile. I am Jesus. We are one. Say it to your other neighbor. Now turn to your other neighbor. I am Jesus. We are one. Now can you imagine you are traveling whether by air, land or sea. I am Jesus. We are traveling today. Come on. I am Jesus. We are going to walk today. I am Jesus. We are going to, we are going to the village today. Now when you live in that consciousness all this preaching everywhere which is in your village you go and enjoy yourself and the witches will greet you and give you gifts glory be to god forever squeeze your neighbors and say and jesus we are one we are one say it like you mean say and jesus we are one now it also means when i want to eat i and jesus can be eating glory. Now, look at another thing. When we start living in this consciousness, our song will change. What did I say? Our song will change. Pass me not a gentle Savior. My, don't play the keyboard. Hear my humble cry. What? Now, it conveys a consciousness of distance true or false. It means you are here, he's passing. And you are you are begging him today. You are passing. Please don't pass me by. Savior, unbelievers can sing that song, but believers shouldn't sing that song. The reason is an unbeliever had not had the Savior in him. But for you, who you and him are one, you don't need to sing it because when you are singing it, it conveys distance. And what is the distance? You are here. He is there. And what we are teaching is avoiding duality. Come on, what are we teaching? Avoiding. Come on, say it for the last time. We are teaching on avoiding. Because your life is not separate. Colossians said, Christ is my life. So if Christ is my life, it is wrong for me to say, pass me not. Now, when you know all these things, there are songs that naturally changes. I've heard so many things being sung today. There is something that make me come into your pleasure. My, oh my, oh my. And then you now see Holy Ghost pepper soup. You can see such people, they live a life of duality. Come on, what did I say? They live a life of duality. I shouldn't think that way. He lives in me. Where did I go? Okay, look at and you know, this is how some people pray. Father, we just come into your presence. Where were you since? You were wandering outside his presence. But he lives in you. You are trying to come into his presence. And that is why I said, living a life of duality is like a man that is inside the church and is making all effort to get into the church. Father, as we have just come into your presence, let your presence just abide here. Ah, it's like we are here and he's coming from this other side. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, avoid duality. It will take you nowhere. 
it negates it negates the concept of what Christ came to do as our substitute now we quote he has raised us up is it not what we quote in Ephesians 2 now if we quote that how come we are together and all of a sudden he is passing and we are trying to meet him alright the last scripture for tonight 1 Corinthians and 2 verse 16 how many of you have been blessed it's like we should continue this topic we should continue next Sunday let's understand this see your victory is in this understanding your victory is in this understanding if Jesus while he walked on earth the first thing he said I and my father were one the religious people pick stone and that is what is happening today there are quarters you don't dare mention you and your father are one yeah true of us these people were quoting the law they obeyed the law but as soon as Jesus said I am my father and Jesus said why are you picking up stones he said you are blasphemy we know our father you don't resemble him <laughs> you don't need to look like him from the stand, standpoint of man am I speaking to somebody but exactly what the Bible says is who you are hello for who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him look at the next one boss we have do we have the mind of Christ what is the word have it's a possessive word come on the word have talks about possession true of us it is a we are trying to have it's a present time so we have now what God says what the Bible means to say especially Paul was saying you can think the way Christ think because he lives in you do you see why I know you can never fail nobody said amen to that amen. I, I didn't, you, you didn't get it do you see why I know you can never fail because you have the mind of Christ that mind doesn't fail you can't fail because that's the mind he is your life am I communicating here everybody say he's my life I have his mind look at I, I, I'll quote don't go there look at when Paul wrote to Timothy he said for God has not given you the spirit of fear but he has given to you the spirit of love power and what because we have the same mind your mind is so clear you can never be confused I speak over you as you walk in this consciousness what becomes an issue to others becomes a springboard for you in the name of Jesus can you say after me I and Jesus we are one speak to your body say body Christ has become my life therefore you body you will not entertain any form of sickness every form of symptom in this body check out in this consciousness in the name of Jesus celebrate your victory God bless you tonight celebrate your victory what a mighty God we serve holy are you Lord Oh creation call you Lord holy is your name we worship your majesty awesome God how is our thank you thank you for speaking to us we have come to the understanding that our life is your life thank you Lord because I and Jesus we are one Lord thank you for making
making us walk in victory. In Jesus' name.